Welcome to this week's edition of the Week in Triathlon. Let's roll that intro and get stuck into this week's news. And top of the news this week is Holly Belloch and her four-year ban for testing positive for exogenous testosterone at following Ironman Texas last year. The ban was instituted on the 1st of July uh, 2016 and will run for four years. She admitted to wrongdoing and accepted her four-year ban and also admitted that the coaches that she's been working with had warned her about the negative effects of injecting herself with testosterone, but she chose to do so anyway. Which then begs the question, why would an athlete use testosterone? Obviously, testosterone would be doing things like bulking you up. But microdosing of testosterone will increase the speed at which you recover from your workout. So it's a case of dopers taking something like testosterone are not doing so because they're looking for a shortcut to not work as hard as uh, clean athletes are doing. The athletes that are taking uh, drugs like testosterone are doing so to be able to work harder than clean athletes because they are able to work harder, they're able to push harder, recover faster and get stuck into the next hard workout that much quicker. That's why drugs like testosterone get used. Obviously, from a health perspective, a female triathlete should never inject themselves with testosterone because it absolutely screws up your endocrine system and the changes that it makes are permanent. And it seems like with all the bad press that Ironman Australia has been getting lately that the Ironman Corporation has come up with a way to be able to boost um, entry numbers. And as many of you would have seen by now, that there's a brand new way to be able to uh, qualify for Kona. Obviously, you've got qualifying through competing in an event. If you compete in a 70.3 in China, you'll be able to qualify for Kona for the full iron distance event, but that's a totally different matter altogether. Then Ironman's got their legacy program, which is sort of half and half replaced the uh, the lottery system, which was declared an I- illegal um, gambling operation. And then... Finally, the brand new way that you can qualify for Kona was that if you entered Ironman Australia before the 22nd of February, your early entry put you into a draw to be able to draw out a qualification to Kona. And that qualification to Kona wasn't even, didn't even have a prerequisite of being able to get to the finish line of Ironman Australia. All you needed to do was put in your entry before the 22nd of February and you were in line to be able to win one of the slots that were available for for Corona that were allocated to Ironman Australia for the purposes of this lucky draw. So enter before the 22nd of February and qualify to get to Corona. You don't even need to get through more than 50 or 100 meters of the swim course and get a, get a DNF and still go to Corona. Go figure. Then we get on to new rules for 2017 for the Ironman events, bearing in mind that Ironman has been in extensive uh, negotiations with the ITU to be able to bring Ironman rules and ITU rules closer together. And the first of these re- relates to safety on, uh, on the course, especially on the bike course, and that is the banning of communication devices. So which means that if you've seen you speaking on your mobile phone, if you've seen texting, or for that matter, going for a Kardashian-like selfie picture, you'll be getting, getting a warning. If you do not heed the warning, it's an immediate disqualification. Uh, so which means that all you want to be Kardashians out there, selfies are now a thing of the past. No longer will you be able to sit up in the middle of your Ironman bike leg and take a selfie of yourself getting blitz passed by one of the pros while the pros are doing their second lap, you won't be able to get a selfie next to the pro in full race mode anymore because that will lead you to be getting disqualified from the event. So I'm afraid all you want to be Kardashians out there, remember this is an Ironman event, not a selfie posing event. 
The second major rule change, and this relates to mainly the influence coming across from the ITU, and that is if your tri suit has a front zipper, you will no longer be able to unzip your, your tri top below the level of the breastbone, below the level of the stern sternum. Any zip, if you zip beyond the level of the sternum, it will lead to a warning. Second inf infringement, possibly a time penalty, third infringement disqualification. The question arises whether or not the second infringement will be immediate disqualification or the third infringement. That's still up in the air a little bit at the moment. But from that point of view, if your tri suit extend, zipper ex is able to extend beyond the sternum, maybe put a stopper safety pin or something like that in your tri suit at that level that you can't pull the zipper down below that level just to make sure that you don't fall foul of that brand new rule and for audio money and if you're looking at uh, getting yourself a new tri suit made for racing in an Ironman event this year maybe include a zipper that doesn't extend beyond the sternum and that way you don't fall foul of the rules either that brings us to the end of this week's edition of the Week in Triathlon. Be sure to like the video, share it out amongst your friends, post any comments, questions or criticisms that you may have in that comment section down below. Remember, if you're new to my channel, hit the subscribe button that's down there. Stay tuned to my channel for all the new content that comes up every single day of the week. And last but by no means least, remember, until the two of us meet again, stay carved up for the win. See you next time. Cheers.